All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, you're getting some late night Michi audio because I'm literally recording this on December 4th, 2023, the day after, well, technically the day after, it's the middle of the night, um, after Los Angeles Comic Con. So you're getting my late night voice. I don't normally sound this way, but um, I took a big nap, big sleep after this con and I'm now wide awake with zoomies. And so I'm like, you know what? Let's just, let's just do it now. Let's just get the video out there because LA comic con was, um, it was something sure was. It was definitely something. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a longer video, which I know you guys like, but before we do that, I need to do some self promo for myself. Um, hi, if you like me, like my content, uh, would like to purchase some of my wares. My name is Michi, a Twitch disaster. I am a full time freelance artist. I do VTubing streams on Twitch. I also do a lot of art shows, the best of them, pretty much as much as I can within, um, Southern California, where I'm located, but I do venture out to other states here and there, mostly states that I have friends with for uh, reasons I will actually talk about in this review. But if you would like to meet me, um, this month I will be doing another Identity 5 IDV cup sleeve event. It is a free event with myself and other artists selling our Identity V wares. It will be in Fullerton, California. I will have a little promo on the screen of all the info you need. Um, and yeah, I would love to see you there. And then if you, IDV isn't really your thing or you're not that close to Fullerton, California, um, I will be at Anime Los Angeles, which is not in Los Angeles. It's in the Long Beach Convention Center um, in January. I think it's the first weekend. Um, if not, it's like right before the first weekend. But yeah, that's my first con for 2024. And the only one I have for the early like winter quote unquote bracket so far uh, going into 2024. I have other cons that I prepaid for, but those aren't until way, way, way later. So there, we got the shill out. If you would like to know more, please follow me on literally any of my other social media. I'm very, very active there. Um, and yeah, let's get into the Artist Alley convention review. Um, also, for anybody who is wondering, uh, any of my patrons out there, doesn't matter the tier, um, I did not do a lot of vlog footage, so I'll be putting that into a mini video and slapping that on Patreon for my patrons, because I didn't feel like adding it here and it wasn't a lot of footage, but I mean, for the people who do want to see it, it'll be there probably like in a few days, anyway. Or by the time you're watching this, when it goes live and public, because patrons get videos first, um, it might already be up. So just, just as a heads up there, um, if you love the con vlogs, this is not a con vlog, it is a review. So, all right, did all, did all that. Whew, caboodle. So this was my last con of the year, technically. I don't really consider the IDV cup sleeve event a con, because it is a cup sleeve one day free event by a boba shop, which I've done before. Lots of fun. Um, but yeah, uh, this was my first Los Angeles comic con. I've done comic cons before I did comic con revolution and that was, um, also awful. Um, I'm also going to be using the term dog water a lot because, um, I'm a person with ADHD. I know this is a lot in the intro if you were just finding me or if you're mutuals or if you followed me from the con. Hi, how are you? I hope you like your time here. But, um, yeah, uh, because I'm trying to do my best not to curse in this video because I have a lot to say. And I'm one of those people that like snatches phrases that my friends say. And one of my friends constantly was saying it at the con and it's just, it's now gonna be a part of my vocabulary. I'm sorry, but I'm not. So yeah, uh, this is my last con of the year and I was super excited for it. I was gonna be able to meet uh, some mutuals of mine that I hadn't met before. Um, and my friends got in. It was my first time solo tabling in a long, long time. So I was very excited for that, especially with my more like rebranded focus on more like spooky things and things like that over just before when I first made my shop of just everything I made slap into uh, merch, you know, now I'm trying to be a little bit more focused, but yeah, uh, this con was horribly run. I'm just going to come right out with it. Uh, it was horribly run. Um, and it's very expensive. We found out later on that they overbooked the artist alley, which, um, should be a crime. 
I personally believe. I think it's gross because these tables weren't cheap. For a three day con, it was either just under $500 or $500. But if you guys didn't know, that's what I paid for Anime Expo and for Anime Los Angeles. And we get a bigger spot and it's like four days compared to the three here and the weird hours. That was another thing. The hours were really whack. Um, and yeah, they were so overbooked that on the first day, there were a lot of artists who were paid for everything, had their confirmation, uh, just didn't even get a badge. They didn't even get a badge because they ran out of badges because they oversold the event. Um, and I can let you know, I talked to mm, at least 60 maybe 70 artists and I was very active in the Artist Alley International Discord for this group for the this event and nearly everyone I talked to give or take three people did horribly or just broke even or barely made profit um, and the few people that did were the people that had like one thing be their brand which this is not me shaming that, you know, make your coin, have fun. Um, and I'll get all into that a little later because I also have it separated into, uh, <laughs> into days, as you can see from my, well, you can't see, but, um, cause if you're looking on screen right now, it's just random artwork I have, uh, as B-roll while I talk because, um, yeah, <laughs> nothing special for this, this video. The parking, <laughs> Because my husband and I are local enough that we just won't, we just paid for parking or paying for a hotel. And thank God we did. If we had paid for a hotel, not nah, been so screwed. But parking was $30, $30 a day for a three day con with no day zero, unless you were an exhibitor. We're going to get into that when I get and I start talking about day one, because there's a little, little asterisk there. It's a little important fun fact. So yes, yeah, so that was $90 just going to parking, like nothing else, nothing else. Uh, so that added on to my cost, obviously, on top of gas, on top of food, on top of the fact that my husband actually took a day off of work to help me because it was my first time solo tabling. And now with everything that's been happening, honestly, I probably didn't even need him the first day with how slow things were. I'm very happy he was there. He had a lot of fun. He, uh, he read a lot of books, which would also tell you how slow it was. My husband, who's not a fast reader, um, I'm a very fast reader, so he's more of like a normal-ish reader. He was able to finish two books in three days, so like that should also tell you how things went, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, give or take, at the end of the day, after everything, I made maybe, maybe $300 profit. And I say maybe because I did buy some things, but myself and many other artists that did uh, dog water, um, did dog water awful, uh, we just did a lot of trades. A lot of this, I think is the most trades I've ever done at a con because people were like, I mean, I want to be rude if you want to trade. And I'm like, I'm, I'm down to trade. <laughs> Who made money here? So with that being said, let me look at my notes. Um, what made it were the people, like the people talking. I didn't have that many two weird experiences except for the third day, which we will also get to. The people made it. I made some amazing art friends. Um, had a blast with my mutuals. Yeah, let's, let's see. Is that everything? Oh, this is also the first con that I have willingly left early for. I have left early for one other con in my entire time doing conventions. And that was only because I literally felt myself uh, passing out from tiredness because I had an insomniatic episode the night before and nothing would work. So I was like, I told my table buddy at the time for that con, I'm like, I need to leave early or else I might not like make it home. Um, and that wasn't to freak people out. Like I was, I was like passing out at my booth. So, and I did barely make it for that event. Um, I did, I did barely make it home. It was like a very dangerous thing. And before people say like, oh, well, if you were that tired, you could have pulled over and slept somewhere. I live in a certain area of Southern California where that's not safe. And at the time of recording this, the car I was driving was a very easy to break into car. So I was, I was not, not going to do that. The car I have now. Yeah, I probably could. I'd feel safe in the car I have now, but, um, yeah. So let's just, <laughs> let's just get into it. Why don't we? So we're going to go down day one, the artists in the artist alley, we got no day zero. They literally said so on the pamphlet. Some of the vendors were able to get a day zero, but nope, everyone else had day of. 
And also, this is the first convention I've had with whack hours. They were whack. Um, the first day was, hear me out. So we had no day zero, right? It was 8 a.m. And that includes badge pickup to 9, 9 p.m. on a Friday. On a Friday. Um, but the convention itself didn't actually open up until 3 p.m. So it was three to nine. And for a lot of people, that's not that big of a deal. For a lot of us, the rest of us, we were like, huh? What you, what you mean? What you mean? Uh, no day zero, no pack up. So I also, because I only had one cart and a husband who's very good at Tetrising, I was able to get around being forced to pay for the like moving fee thing. Um, on pickup day, we saw a lot of people pretty much being forced if you had a like a lot of stuff to use the conventions like m moving stuff company I don't know what they're considered but literally they were like taking product and moving stuff around and from what I saw people were not happy about that like everyone I saw you could see the artist like with the random person who works at the convention center they were like irritated or tired or already done with it and the con hadn't even started so I was like mm. I got lucky with that one cart but I feel really bad for my other friends who didn't. There was that, obviously, had to pay for parking, um, which wasn't great. But at least because we got there so early, we were able to get, like, a good parking spot. So even though we paid $30 a day, at least it was, like, right there so we didn't have to walk too, too far. Because if you guys also don't know, the Los Angeles Convention Center is very big. I know there are convention centers that are bigger, but I think, I think besides some in Sacramento, it is, like, the biggest in the state, but it if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. I, 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 I show up to my table and what do I see? But uno chair, one chair, one chair. Um, and I was very confused because it was like clearly in the middle of the tables and I'm looking around and everyone has just one chair and everyone who is there early is like, why is there only one chair? We were promised two chairs, an eight foot table and two badges. Um, and got our badges, but there was one chair. And then another person who worked for the convention center, um, this wasn't the guy who runs the artist alley. It was like a person who actually works at the convention center itself. Cause if you guys don't know, um, there are people who like own comic conventions and anime conventions and art conventions, and they rent out spaces for that event and people work at those spaces like food vendors parking people food vendors parking people people who like clean up the place you know stuff like that those are people who don't usually work for the actual people running it they're the people who work for like the building itself and uh so we were trying to like look around and we were like hey where's our second chair and they were like oh you have to you have to rent a chair you gotta rent a chair so um uh for anybody who's wondering my husband car daddy my uh <laughs> my 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 little honey my coo uh my cody um i was gonna say my coo i don't know why i called him that i never call him that this is what i get for making the audio at like 4 30 a.m anyway um because he's done a lot of like car conventions and other work conventions before not really like the artist scene so he was like uh-uh i know how this goes and so he got us a chair and he got another people a chair who were like an older couple and he tried getting my friend a chair and they're like hey you have to rent for that and he's like no i don't it says so in the contract and the guy tried to argue with him that no we had to rent a chair and wouldn't tell us how much the rental is so i really hope no one actually rented a chair but yeah going back and forth i come back and um or he comes back and we're working and then the guy comes back this was the most milk toast, wet looking man, full of shame. And he was like, oh, sir, I am so sorry. Uh, you were right. You guys were supposed to get two chairs and not rent a chair. So that's already, that's just set up, guys. That is literally set up. We haven't even gotten to the con. We are hours away. This is at 8 a.m. We are hours away from the start of the con. And we're like, that, um... Ooh, that doesn't make me feel good. So, and then we're seeing, um, as we're setting up and stuff, there's another guy on a forklift with like a mountain of chairs. And the guy on the forklift is like, 
arguing with the guy that was the the milk toast wet man that was like no we have to give them the chairs and he's like no they need to rent it's like no it's in their thing they ha- we have to give them the chairs and so i'm like oh again this is this is not this is not good that's not good so we're setting up we're setting up other people are showing up other people are setting up we're fine and a person in my row i won't say who it is to um keep this quiet if they don't want to share this so uh people who went didn't know this but the artists did because we were helping console them there was a person who was like crying when they were bringing their stuff over and we saw they were bringing over like a fully made setup so myself cody and a couple other people were very confused who were like here early and it found out that um they were moving people yeah they were moving people last minute um and that's when we found out that they overbooked the event so there were people being moved who had full setups done who had their tables fully done who had a lot of stuff a lot lot of stuff um and the reason for why this one artist was crying was because whoever it was again from what i heard it wasn't the guy running the artist alley it was someone at the con um verbatim it was something along the lines of this person is more important than you so you're going to move the artists are going to move which that uh that little comment traveled real fast to the other artist in the artist alley buddy so you know not smart not smart telling the people who paid nearly 500 bucks a pop to be here uh that were not important just just not not good and uh we're gonna go back on the third day because that also comes back around yes yes it does like i said this this con was um sure something (laughs) but yeah everything got set up we were good a couple of my friends in the spider-verse stamp rally i was in my very first stamp rally they ended up getting moved last minute um a lot of people were literally being told myself included and others uh to be mean if they're trying to move you be mean like if your name is on a table be mean um and then a mutual of mine on instagram uh king kuma i'll make sure to put uh his info up there um pretty much they kind of forgot about his whole row so they just had to find a table and make a row last minute because of how badly they oversold the event um also there was a weird confusion with the setup for artist alley so a row which is normally like a primo spot from what i've heard from people who've done this con before um it was flipped so a was in the nosebleeds back by the bathrooms where there was nothing and then i think it was k yeah it was either k or um yeah it was it was k row was the like last row but that was like the entrance to the artist alley very very weird so yeah um let's see let's see um obviously uh the hours died out really quickly uh a lot of people showed up a lot of people looking a lot of people haggling which is not normal i have not really seen that but a lot of people were haggling a lot of stuff like that and I've heard people talking about how, like, trying to rationalize it because, you know, we're artists trying to figure out what's going on. And some people are like, oh, is it because the con is in December and it's the holidays and everyone just spent money on Black Friday? No, honey. No, it's not. Um, because I know for a fact, because I have a lot of friends who do hol- uh, holiday Matsuri. And, well, I've heard that con can be run iffy here and there. Um, at least that convention uh, you make money and it's like right before Christmas. A lot of people go ham for holiday Matsuri. Um, and to where I know it's, that is a lot of people's anime expo. That is a lot of artists like big money maker for the end of the year. So yeah, uh, it's definitely, uh, not the con or the section. And we're going to get into why I believe this is at the very end of the video. I know I keep hinting at it, so I'm sorry. But this was a three-day con of a lot of mess. So, yeah. Husband and I, we left uh, at at closing, and we were exhausted. Uh, we did a teardown. We left. We got fast food. I literally ate my food, and I passed out. Oh, wait, no. I didn't. I forgot. I wanted to pass out um, because I was so exhausted, but my insomnia hit. So I did the next day, which we're on day two now, uh, flipping my notebook around (laughs) so we can get this done, where the the hours were 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I was functioning a little to no sleep. 
thank God that my husband was there to drive or I might have actually been in danger. On this day, I saw there were a lot more people, obviously. This is the day I broke even, but I literally didn't break even until the end of the day. Um, and so what ended up happening was I saw a lot of people walking around with photos and signatures. Again, keep that in mind. Put a pen in that. Put a pen in that. Right? And um, I was thinking it was odd because I saw like a lot of people with these um, photos and, and signatures and stuff. Um, and not a lot of people buying. A lot of people buying stickers. A lot of people buying, um, like, they asked me if I had more discounts. Um, someone asked me if I had, like, sales or anything going on the last day. But a lot more than normal. And I was like, no. I don't know. Um, if you guys also don't know, um, it's very rude to ask. It is It is very, very rude to ask uh, anyone in the artist alley or selling at a convention if they're doing a sale, usually there'll be a sign somewhere on the booth saying so, or they will say something. Um, don't try to haggle. Don't try to ask. It's, it's, it's rude. It's not seen as cute or question or questionable. It's just seen as rude. Perks to this one. Um, I got to do a random surprise VTuber collab. One of my mutuals showed up. I didn't know any of my VTuber mutuals were even going to be there. She showed up and she was like, hey, are you, you know, me, she Twisted Disaster? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, do you have any, like, thing of your model? And I was like, oh, yeah, I have, like, a sticker and a charm. And she pulled up her phone and was like, oh, I mean, like, to take, like, a picture. And I was like, oh, I get, I get to do the thing. So I'll put that, like, photo on screen right now. Um, lots of fun. Uh, we got to talking and got the little, I got my very first little VTuber collab thing going on. And then I found out another mutual of mine, apparently the whole con was like two or three tables away the whole time. We never knew. We didn't know. Found out literally today, the last day of the event, um, <laughs> like over Twitter. And we're like, wow, wild, small world, right? So on top of everything else going on, on the second day, I had an IBS attack. It might be TMI. I don't care. Um, but yeah, it was slow enough that even though I kept running to the bathroom nonstop, didn't affect my sales, like, at all. <laughs> um, the bathrooms were clean. That's a perk, I guess. Um, let's see. What's another weird thing that happened? Oh, that's right. I sold it out some of my FNAF stuff. I had the people liked my FNAF stuff. I plan on having more for Anime Los Angeles. Actually, at the time of me recording this um, video, I high-key, low-key might be making the order either today or tomorrow. But yeah. Um, another weird highlight that we learned. Uh, so remember when I brought up that like photos and signatures thing a little earlier? We're going to talk about that right now. So a friend of mine who was working there, uh, Darwin Rose Studios. Again, I'll have their info on screen. Um, and I'll have them linked down below in the description box if you would like to follow them. Uh, they had a bunch of pillows of just a bunch of things, but they really wanted to give, uh, Nanami her, the, the actress who was live action Nanami from one, the One Piece show, um, one of her pillows that she had made. So she asked me to proxy. I sat at her, at their table and I waited and she, you know, skedaddled off and I'm doing there, I'm doing her thing, helping her with some sales and having fun. And then she comes back. And I'm like, so how'd it go? And they were like, they wanted me to pay $60 for a QR code to do a meet and greet when she's like, no, I'm an artist here. I just want to give the actress this pillow. That's all I want to do is I want to give her the pillow. And they were like, no, you got to pay like $60 for this meet and greet. You can't even just give it. And she's like, well, can I just give it to you to give to her? And it's like, no. Um, and at first we thought it was like a safety reason, but we later found out, we later found out, right? So remember how I mentioned how lots and lots of people were walking around with photographs and like signatures, a lot of signatures going around. Um, turns out that they were charging anywhere from 60 to $150 where the $150 was more of the reg um, price to get a signature meet this actor person and that's where most of the people's money went because the con admission tickets on its own right weren't that cheap either so you had the con ticket 
you had the $30 parking, you had every single food vendor in this event charge out the A for basic con level food. I will admit I did have one really good quesadilla, but it was $20 and, and they only took card, didn't take any cash, which I know for some people are like, well, cashless is better. Not when you're working at an event. A lot of us have cash. We want to just spend the cash on food. We don't want to have to deal with bank stuff. We don't want to deal with credit cards. It's just kind of how it is. Um, at least when you're in the con scene, that's how myself and all my friends and every other artist I talk to are kind of like that. We're like, hey, we have this cash. Just please just let us buy food. It's all we want. Um, but yeah, so that's where everybody's money was going. Because like I said, I saw tons of people. And... For some people who are wondering, like, oh, that's normal. That's not normal out here. Not from the conventions I've done. Meet and griefs and autographs, unless you are, like, an A-list actor or an A-list voice actor. Um, or, like, really, really, really big in the, like, you know, um, in the nerd sphere. Then they'll charge, like, the 100 150 bucks. But I guess at other states, that's kind of normal. But then you gotta remember... Because I'm thinking about myself when I've done out-of-state cons with friends where, like, we had free parking. We had, like, the tickets were cheap just to go to the event. Um, you know, things in the convention hall were relatively fair price, so more people were more willing to buy things. Um, all those just fun, fun little hee-hee-ha-has. Um, but yeah, after learning that, I was like, oh, that's where everyone's money is. No wonder people are buying the cheapest things or trying to figure out what's going on or trying to get discounts or sales or stuff like that. Um, I did have a single theft. Wasn't that big of a deal. It was a sticker. So I'm, eh, when it's a sticker, I don't mind. Um, but yeah, so I was gonna, I was going to say, maybe this is the first con I don't have something stolen. Um, but eh, people are going to snatch and grab. It's kind of a sad fact of life. Um, and I don't want to waste my stickers actually sticking them onto the board. I would rather just use double-sided tape or some kind of film or something to keep it there. And then if people want, like if I'm out, out and I don't want to print more or I can't print more, I can just give them my display for a discount. That's not everyone. That's just me. But yeah, learn that and then learn that like, again, we got nothing pretty much for being in the artist alley. So the only good thing for day two for me would have to be... Hanging out with some artists, talking, having fun. Um, oh, and then getting post-con Denny's. Because um, that in its own right was its whole adventure. I got to go to Denny's with Nicole Brennan. We had a blast. I was with my normal friends. Um, and we stayed there for many hours just laughing and dying and telling stories about just, like, wild things going on. So that was fun. Um, I hope she has, a rest of her uh, she has a fun rest of her trip here in Cali. Again, when this video goes up, I think she might be going to another state she said she had another con going on but you know make do um but yeah that was chicken man don't yeah that was day two so uh day three final day here we are so here's where um <laughs> we can tell that the con kind of messed up. So as we're setting up on the last day, we're like, all right, we made it. Literally every talk artist I talked to, same thing. I asked around, all of them were like, yeah, broke even yesterday. Eh, good luck today. Or how you doing? Everyone's like, okay, not great. Decent. Um, the only people I know that did really, really well, again, I'm not going to say exactly who because I don't want to give them away, were people who had like a singular thing. And by that, I mean, like, their their whole brand was this one thing. Um, and so, got on those people. Because even they were like, I felt bad I was talking to one of them. And then they were like, oh, I did I did really well. Are people not doing well? And we're like, no. And then I saw them, like, check the, the, the Discord. And they're like, oh, no. And I'm like, hey, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad for making money. Like, don't, don't blame yourself. It ain't your fault that this place is horribly run. So, we found out after, after the overbooking. After the moving around artists last minute, after telling artists they're not as important, um, after screwing over like big voice heads and big actors and stuff like that, um, they had an announcement that was like, hey, if people want to get 
their table for next year, which this is kind of a normal con thing. You know, go to blah, blah, blah and pay for it now. And after talking to a lot of people, um, I don't know how many people did do it, but I know a lot of people I talked to didn't didn't do it. Um, and a lot of them were because, like, they're also apparently moving the convention to October, um, which I think is very weird. And I think they realize they messed up because uh, th- why else would you move it to October? It's just very weird. It's a, it was a very we- this was a very weird event. Um, and if you guys didn't know, there's also a lot of other cons in California in October. So it's like, are you trying to stick for like a holiday theme? Cause this one was December, but I only saw a couple, like a small handful of like wintry Christmassy, um, cosplayers going around. So, you know, I don't, I don't know, but personally for me, there's a lot of other, con- there are at least three cons I would like to get into in October. The apps aren't out yet, but I would really, really like to. Um, but besides that, it's like, w- w- why? Why? Like, why would I? Um, so if I do come back next year, if I do, I'm, I'm sharing, I'm sharing a table. I'm not paying that again. Uh, I just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with that. That's, and that's what I hear from a lot of other people. Um, a lot of my friends who like flew out and got hotels and got food and had other things. Some of them, again, barely broke even when they're like, uh, I was supposed to be banking on this con. I've talked to people. I talked to someone who has done this con since 2014, back when it was called Kamikaze. Um, and they told me how they're like, I'm an alumni and I got screwed over this year. Um, so if I'm still in the country, then I'll probably do it next year. But if not, we'll see, cause this is not good. I did really good last year and I did really good every other year. And again, I can't even fully blame the economy for this one. Cause normally it's like, okay, we can blame the economy. Um, cause the economy is dog water right now, but uh, not not when it's just the the convention head being greedy, and then after overselling the event, after overselling the event, having the nerve to ask people and announce like, well, we sold out of the artist. It's like, yeah, because you oversold it. That was not that was a you problem, buddy, baby cakes. So other highlights of the third day. Um, I did see a person walking around with a live cat. Didn't expect that. It was cat just chilling on his shoulder. Con cat. Um, the cat seemed chill and not overstimulated, so I'm hoping that cat just does a lot of stuff and it was just vibing. Um, but I saw that, um, oh, saw a, uh, literal, um, I can't use this word on YouTube. How do I describe it? Um, they were the bad guys in the, in World War II, who have a very famous armband with a very famous bad ouchy symbol. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a Jewish person. Uh, I was raised Jewish, um, Ashkenazi. And uh, it is literally a week before Hanukkah. So I was like, oh, cute. And before anybody tries like defending this, which um, if you do in my comments, Good luck defending that. Uh, They weren't in cosplay. They were dressed as a normal alternative person. But uh, I saw the armband and I just kept staring at it. Uh, And uh, they seemed nice. And then they like liked my stuff. They were like, oh, this is neat. And they were going around and getting people's tables. And me and other artists were like side eyeing each other like. "Mm, mm, mm." So, yeah, didn't expect to see that. Uh, just, just a random dude walking around, you know, with a certain bad guys from World War II armband for the name I can't say on this platform or else my video will get suppressed. Uh, yeah, that was not fun. Uh, that was a shocker. Um, uh, I guess just the weirdos came out and I'm not talking about neurodivergent people. I'm a neurodivergent person. Um, cause a lot of people are like, Oh, he, he comic cons and cons are where like the nerds come out and it's like, yeah, but there's also just, there's also just weird people. I kind of wish people would stop the whole, like, there are a lot of weird tropes in media. Sorry to go on this tangent, but we're just going to go here. Um, where with a 2023 lens, it's like, Oh, that person's just autistic. They're not weird. Um, because actual autistic people, they can they can tell when someone's being weird or when they're being autistic. There there is in fact a difference. Um, and now I will not be making a video on that topic. You guys can do your own research and your own life experiences. But um, yes, yeah, so these are just weird people. Um, 
So we got nothing wrong with the hyperfixation BBs. I am the same way. But yeah, uh, there was some guy at one of my friend's table who flew out here who for like 10, 15 minutes was just near their booth, just crunched over, just like writing something down figuriously, bought a single button and then handed my friend this like note card to a little Rodica website. And then uh, under it said like, if you would love to get a casting email, email me. And this guy was very persistent that my friend do that. And my friend was like, yeah, mm-hmm, okay. So there was that. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, let me grab my phone. All right, here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. So, um, another thing, these are DMs from a friend, so I'm just reading it. I'm not going to put them on screen. Um, (laughs) Michelle, do you know that there's more vendors in another building, like across the bridge? Yeah. So guess what? There was a whole nother exhibit hall that nobody knew existed. And so I talked to some other people and they were like, wait, what? And in the artist like discord, that kind of blew up a little bit. So yeah, on top of overselling the event, on top of trying to get tables for next year, even though moving the date on top of having horrible foot traffic for everybody. Um, they apparently had two vendors halls that people didn't know about. There was the West hall and then there was the main hall and we were in the main hall. So like, there was that. Oh, I had someone come up and uh, sniff my display. Like they just got up, they got their face in it and just did a big old whiff. And was just like, like, like the, like, you know, the noticeable smell. And they were like, oh, I love epoxy. And I was like, oh, all right. It didn't buy anything. That happened to me. And then a couple other people. So we talked about the sniffing guy. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Oh, um, person went to my friend's display and then pulled something like, like, like ripped off the, ripped it off the zip tie, breaking it. And then was like, can I get this for a dollar? Uh, and then said no. And the kid just like threw it on the floor and left. And it was like, cute. Love that. Love that. Um, let's see. Anything else going on? Um, Oh yeah, people liked my originals. That was cool. <laughs> people joined my sticker club, which was also cool. Um, but yeah, uh, and and then uh, after a while, uh, when things died down again for the umpteenth time, my husband looked at me and was like, "You want to just leave early?" And I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna be in traffic." So we left about an hour early. Um, and from what I heard from everybody else, I missed nothing. No real last minute sales. No mail things. The only thing I was bummed about was uh, the Spider Verse stamp rally people that I was in the group I was in we were gonna do a group photo I missed out on that but honestly while I did miss out on that and I am bummed about that um I was not bummed out about being stuck in a parking structure for an hour because everyone their mom was trying to leave like a lot of my friends were so I felt very bad for my friends but they got out safe we're good would I ever do this con again not solo Mm -mm, no way not unless like I made bank or something. I, I would do this a con again if I'm splitting with somebody after all of the shenanigans that we were dealing with. Um, what would I rate it? Five out of ten. And literally only a five because of the amazing people that came by, hung out at my booth, we talked, had a blast. Um, and the artist mutuals that I'm now friends with. Like that, literally it was the friends along the way situation. So... Yeah, that was uh, not a good way to end the con season for me. So I'm hoping the IDV event is fun, but it's not really a con, like I said. So I'm just going to have fun there. I broke even. I had a, I, I had an okay time. I'm excited for the holidays. I'm excited for Hanukkah. Um, and yeah, hope they change their stuff out. And I'm kind of excited to see other people's reviews if they have any reviews or like stuff going on because... Um, yeah, Los Angeles Comic Con uh, 2023, it was sure, sure was something. So anyway, I have to do my little shill now. So if you guys would like and you watch the whole video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I hate saying it, but it's kind of necessary at this point. Uh, and if you can't think of something to comment, comment for the bot or let me know. I don't know. Uh, your favorite type of Pokemon. I don't know, that's something. Anyway, thank you as always to my amazing Patreon patrons. Love you guys so, so much. I have a Patreon sticker club where you get an original sticker mailed to you every month, including international. 
Yep, there's my spiel. There's my stuff. I will see you guys next time. Love you all. Bye-bye.